My name is Jeremy. Sorry about go. that. Got it. So my name is Jeremy. Um, my partner in crime is Leah Sobering. You'll see her um, in the group as well. We both work for Career Beacon. Um, what is Career Beacon? Career Beacon is essentially um, Canada's number one job board. So if you've ever used sites like Indeed or LinkedIn, so it's similar to that. The presentation today, the workshop is essentially about creating your job search strategy. A little outline of what we'll be discussing today. Um, small introduction, um, assessing skills and qualifications, setting job search goals, utilizing career beacon, networking, tailoring your resume and cover letter, interview preparation, follow-up, conclusion at the end, and then hopefully we'll have time for a Q&A at the end. So first and foremost, assessing your skills and qualifications. So being honest and realistic about your skills and experience can have real long-term benefits um, for your career. In the short term, it may limit the amount of job opportunities you're considered for, but in the long term, it can add to greater job satisf satisfaction, better career progression, and a more successful job search. So when you are honest about what you have to offer, you're more likely to find a job that's good fit for your skills and interests. So this, le again, leads to greater job satisfaction as you're able to enjoy being able to use your strengths, doing what you enjoy. So take time for self-reflection. So take stock of what are my skills? What are my qualifications? Did I go to school? That kind of thing. And your experience, your relevant experience. Ask yourself, what are the skills I'm confident in? What are the skills I need to develop more? And what are the jobs that I'm qualified for? So set job search goals. Now that can be a little bit broad. So what do I mean when I say set job search goals? So for example, I know every life is chaotic. Not everyone has the time to go into each specific resume, apply for this job, tweak it this many times because the job ad is asking for this, but your resume says this, but you want to, you want to um, make yourself known for the job. So you're tweaking your resumes. So when I say set goals, I mean, get specific and set measurable goals. For example, I will apply for three jobs per week on Career Beacon. Or for example, I will reach out to five people per week on LinkedIn and grow my network. So if you set specific measurable goals from the outreach, you're more likely to achieve those goals in the long run. So setting job search goals helps in numerous different ways. But the three most important that I found is by providing clarity, um, defining specific and measurable goals provides clarity on what you want to achieve in your job search. So this makes it easier for you to prioritize your time and energy on the tasks that will move you closer towards your goals. Um, setting job search goals helps by pro providing you focus. So with clear goals, you can focus on the most important tasks. You can avoid distractions, thus keeping your job search on track. Um, it also helps as a means for evaluation. So defining your job search goals enables you to track your progress and evaluate the effectiveness of your job search strategies. So this allows you to make necessary adjustments to your approach and stay on track towards really achieving your goals in the long run. So just a quick fact here, and I know this is virtual, so it's a little bit harder for people to turn their mics on and engage, but did you know um, the average job speaker spends only 5% of their time in job search networking? And again, this might be a little bit hard, but if there's like a hands up thing we could do, or you could type in the chat, how many of us job seekers right now are actually leveraging networking? I know for myself, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit older now, but when I first got out of school and I was like, okay, I graduated from St. Thomas University. I'm just going to write a cover letter, put my resume in, and then they're going to give me a job, no problem. 
I never even thought about attending networking events or anything like that. So I'd just be curious to see how many in the audience are actually leveraging networking. So networking truly is key. Uh, research shows that 70% of all jobs aren't even published on online job boards. Um, so that means job boards like Indeed, like Career Beacon, Monster, LinkedIn, all those kind of things. Um, as much as as much as 80% of jobs are filled through personal and professional connections, uh, the average job search lasts eight weeks, but networking can reduce that time to really only four weeks. So I just have some additional stats about networking because I really want to embellish on the fact of it's really, really important if you want to take your job search seriously. So 77% of employers actually say that networking is the most effective job search method. 48% of employers say networking is the most important factor in hiring decisions. So networking can help you get to the top of an applicant list. Let's say you go to an event and you meet someone, you know they have a, a job opening. By meeting them at the event, that's almost like a pre-interview. So they've met you. You're more than just a resume at that point. People who network have a greater chance of finding job opportunities before they're even advertised. Like we were saying before, 70% of jobs aren't even listed on job boards. And networking can help you build relationships with potential employers and learn more about a company before you've even applied. So you'll have that background application process. So networking really provides you with three things, exposure, insider information, and allows you to make personal connections. So exposure, networking allows you to expand your professional network and connect with people who may have information about job opportunities or additional job opportunities elsewhere because people talk. And if, someone's a, so if someone has a job available, nine times out of 10, they want the job filled relatively quickly. Insider information, networking can provide you with valuable insider information about companies and industries, including information about job opportunities that may not be advertised publicly, personal connections. So building personal connections with people in your field or industry can lead to job referrals, recommendations, and support on your job search. Here are just a few practical networking tips. I know, believe it or not, I'm somewhat of an introvert. I know that I'm doing some public speaking right now, but I know that networking can be really challenging for people, especially in the days and age of COVID. We, you know, we were just secluded for two years, barely anyone left their house. So it, it can be hard for some people to get out there, introduce themselves and talk about what you're good at. But here are a few tips that I've found helped me over the years. Um, so first and foremost, attend events, job fairs, industry conferences, uh, networking events. You can meet lots of people in one fell swoop instead of just going out at different times. You can meet in one congregated area and try to meet as many people as possible. You can leverage social media. So leverage media platforms like LinkedIn, uh, mostly LinkedIn, but you could also you know, follow hashtags on Instagram, that kind of thing to, to gauge what the industry is doing. You can connect with um, professionals in your field, join relevant groups, that kind of thing. Um, reach out to people in your network. So reach out to people you know, including friends, former colleague, family, and let them know that you are in fact on the job search. Um, what is incredibly helpful is offering your own help. So helping to offer, offering to help others in your network and ask for help when needed. So building relationships based on mutual support can lead to job opportunities and recommendations in the moment or further down the road. So you found a job and you're ready to apply. What now? It's time to tailor your resume and cover letter. So tailoring your resume and cover letter to each job you apply for is actually essential if you wish to have the best chance of getting an interview. So by customizing your resume and cover letter to highlight the skills and qualifications that are most relevant to the job you're applying for, 
you're demonstrating that you have taken the time to research the role and you do in fact have the necessary qualifications and experience to do the job. This can increase your chance of getting a call back by the employer tenfold. You wouldn't believe the amount of people and technology makes it so easy nowadays, right? Like if you go on to LinkedIn, they have the easy, the quick apply button where it just makes it so easy, just uploading that one resume and you apply for 10 jobs, but what's the return on investment there? You didn't necessarily tweak your resume to highlight what qualifications make you the best candidate for that job. So I, I understand because I'm bad for it too. I like doing things the easy way, but if you do in fact tailor your resume and cover letter, you will see a drastic improvement on callbacks. So go through the job description, um, provide examples of how you meet their needs. So resume and cover letter tips. Read and research the job description carefully. Identify the key skills that are relevant to the job. Make a, lift, make a list of the skills and qualifications that are necessary for the role and highlight them in your resume and cover letter. Emphasize the most relevant experience you have and use job specific language. Use industry specific terms and phrases in your resume and cover letter to demonstrate that you have the knowledge and experience to do the job. And I know Leah has talked about this in the past, but just having, for example, having two screens on your computer, one is your resume, one is the job posting. Go through the qualifications and requirements specifically that they're asking for. Look at your job experience and highlight at your job experience how you are meeting those quali or how you met those qualifications at former jobs. And I know this is a ton of information all at one time. So if anyone wants me to slow down or anything like that, that is completely fine or to go over something again at the end of the presentation. So next, you tailored your resume and cover letter, you ended up getting a call back and lo and behold, you've locked down an interview. That's awesome, congratulations. Let's prepare you for the interview. So first and foremost, research the company. Um, get to know the company you're interviewing with by researching their mission, values, and current project. A HR managers want to interview people who are excited about their company. Prepare, uh, prepare answers to common interview questions. Make sure that you have practiced the answers to these questions so that you can answer them confidently um, during the interview. Practice your elevator pitch. Have a short introduction prepared for when the interviewer asks you to tell them about yourself. So for example, I'm Jeremy McLaughlin. I grew up in Perth, Andover, New Brunswick. I graduated from St. Thomas University back in 2009. Um, I actually toured playing music across Canada for five years. Then I worked in hospitality in four different provinces. I went back to school. I studied marketing. Now I work for a business in New Brunswick. Try not to go on for too long because I know people's lives can be convoluted and there's people are complex and we've done a lot of things. But just try to go over the key points of what you achieve. And if you can, relate some of those key points back to the job you're interviewing for. Um, also prepare questions to ask the interviewer. Have some questions ready to ask the interviewer so you can show them that you're actually engaged in the position. And what do I mean when I say ask them questions? Do I mean like, how much am I going to get paid? What are the benefits? Those are all very relevant questions and you should know the answers to those questions. But I'm talking more in terms of like corporate culture, um, diversity, what are their diversity hiring methods? Um, do we do casual Fridays? Try to get to know the company on more of a, per of a personal basis. Following up. So following up after the interview can be a little bit subjective. Um, it it kind of does depend on the job you're applying for. Normally anything corporate office related, a thank you email that day, or the next, um, a fun story about following up for myself. Um, as soon as I graduated, I applied for, you know, as everyone does a million jobs, I tailored my resume, I sent out a million applications. 
and then I ended up getting a couple interviews. Um, I got an inter I got an interview with a school here in New Brunswick to do a marketing position. During the interview, they asked me a question that I actually didn't know the answer for. And normally I'm pretty good at thinking on my feet, but in that moment, I didn't want to lie to them. So I was just honest. I said, I actually don't know the answer to that question. And we just moved on. During my follow-up email, I went and I, I attained the, I found out the answer to that question that she was asking me. And I wrote a couple paragraphs in response. And believe it or not, that's what ended up getting me the job. When they went back and to decide who the candidate would be, who was successful, they chose me. And she told me that the deciding factor really was that I found out the answer to the question that she didn't know. I followed up and I included it in the email. So what did I prove when I found the answer? It proved that I'm not afraid of work. I'm not afraid of a challenge. And I'm, I'm someone who likes to continuously learn. These are all really important traits. Um, let's say you weren't successful in attaining the job. It can be really, really frustrating, right? Especially, let's say you go through two or three rounds of interviews. Interviews are exhausting to begin with. So to be put through three rounds is really frustrating sometimes. And you didn't get the job. And let's just say when they wrote you the email, confirming that you didn't in fact get the job. It just says, sorry, you weren't successful. Thank you for applying. Check our jobs for more related, um, for more related positions. Don't be afraid to ask for feedback. You can write back to them and you can say, um, can, can specifically, what about me? was not, made me not successful? What was I lacking? Or what could I have done differently? And again, this demonstrates that you're open to learn, open and eager to learn. So how can you utilize Career Beacon and your job search strategy? So I think we touched on this a little bit earlier. So Career Beacon at the end of the day really is a job, a job online job board but it is, more, it is a lot more than that. Um, what you can do to leverage Career Beacon and what I would recommend, um, create yourself a My Beacon account. It's really easy. You just go up into the top right-hand corner. You create yourself an account. Um, why would you do it? So creating a My Beacon account allows you to upload your resume and it makes it honestly 10 times easier to apply for jobs. And it allows you to sign up for relevant job alerts. So let's say, for example, myself, I'm interested in getting a job in marketing. I can sign up for a marketing job alert for here in um, Moncton, Fredericton, St. John. And every morning, I'm actually going to be sent an email about relevant jobs to that industry. You could do engineering, you could do healthcare, whatever, really whatever you want to do. Um, outside of that, we also have a ton of incredible information on our blog directed towards either employers or job seekers. Um, for example, we have tons of amazing blogs um, about preparing for job interviews because that can be so stressful. Um, writing a proper cover letter, how to network uh, effectively, that would go into a little bit more detail than uh, maybe what I could today. And, uh, I know we kind of blasted through this. I was kind of expecting questions halfway through, but we can do a lot of questions at the end. Um, conclusion and key takeaways. So be honest about your skills and qualifications. Very, very important. Set realistic job search goals that you can attain. Definitely incorporate networking. Tailor your resume and cover letter to each individual job and make sure you're following up after the interview. And yeah, we could take as much time as we want to field lots and lots of questions. Thank you so much for this presentation. And uh, everyone, if you have any question, please feel free to tap it in the chat bar. And since we have a lot of time for, for the Q&A session, so if you have any question, you can just raise your hand or you can just unmute yourself and we can start to talk about it. Yeah, feel free to unmute yourself. We can certainly have conversations. 
<laughs> Don't yes, be shy. Uh huh. Yes, and uh, I just I just noticed that uh, the blog from the Korea Bacon is very good. I didn't I I, I before I was mainly just uh, doing the job searching, and I was just searching job. I didn't pay too much attention on the blog part, and I'm checking on it. It looks really awesome. It has a lot of advice about how you can um, do your networking and how you can connect with someone. Okay, so uh, I see someone is raising your hand and uh, you can just uh, unmute yourself and uh, yeah. Hi, hi. Hi. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, so I, exactly, I was having a question. I am a student in UNB in the MBA course and uh, presently what are the consequences? Of what should I do the job? Uh, job i should be i it should be a free job or something which will be effect effective for my career uh, and for my pr i'm so sorry could could you repeat the question i'm not sure i understood it properly uh, 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 i i am just concerned about my uh, pr and the job which i should be having uh, to get that uh, uh, the PR done easily and smoothly. Oh, so your permanent residency? It means I'm concerned about that because I'm I'm still in student. I have having a student visa over here and I am a student in UNB. Okay, yeah, thank you for your question. So for today's session, we are mainly talking about uh, uh, how you can do the online job searching and how you can use the Korean Bacon as a platform for your online job okay. searching. Sorry, we cannot provide any information related to the immigration related. Sorry about okay. that. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, we have another uh, participant, raise your hand. You can just uh, start to talk about your question. Okay, uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we, we can. can. Okay, um, so uh, thank you for the session. I saw the post on Facebook. Uh, so I am applying for jobs from outside Canada. And I wanted to ask if, um, because normally in my country, we include these things in our CV. So I should just ask if I should include my race, my religion, and my gender when applying for jobs in Canada. No. no, normally, no, you wouldn't include any of those. Can I ask, do you include those where uh, where you come from normally? Yes, yes, we do. Yes, where we are you do. from? I'm from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, that's awesome. You're a long way from home. It's great to have you here. Yeah, it's not a uh, standard practice and it might actually sort of almost work against you. I know sometimes also um, pictures might be included in resumes from other countries. Yes. That's not standard in Canada. And one of the one thing that you may come across when you're applying for jobs is that they may ask you to self-declare, you know, race, gender, those sorts of things, but it is also not mandatory. So if there's that questionnaire in the application, um, you can say you prefer not to disclose. Um, so it's a great question um, because yes, part of getting a job, having an interview and whatnot is knowing some of the cultural norms of the, the country that you're you know, applying within. Um, so you do not need to include any of those things. Um, even in going back in your resume, depending, I mean, I'm a lot older, I'm assuming than most of you, but I don't go back more than 15 years in my resume also because not everybody needs to know how old you are because things like bias against age, race and whatnot, they exist. So um, don't be including those. Okay, fine. Great question. Another second question, please. Yeah, sorry, we cannot hear you clearly. Okay, can I ask a second question? Yes, for Yeah. Okay, um, so since you said I should not include it, would it be the same if I am applying to a Christian organization in Canada, so let me maybe say I have to do social work and the organization is a Christian organization. If someone is not a Christian, would that be, uh, would that like maybe be the, a deterrent to someone getting the job? Legally, um, 
legally they can't even ask what your religion is. Am I am I wrong there, Leah? No, you're correct. That that is there are um each province is slightly different, but fairly similar and federally, there's a lot of grounds for discrimination in Canada and religion is one of them. So that should have no factor in um, the decision of whether you're you're um, the successful candidate or not. Now, I'd be curious, I'd be looking at the job description as well, because not all employers follow all the rules and perhaps they they may, if they say something like, uh, you know, someone of the Christian religion is the preferred candidate, they're act that actually is not legal uh, terminology. So that can also maybe raise a flag for you to say, in, in understanding that they can't ask for that, and that it is discriminatory, that may tell you something about the employer. So it may be an employer you might not want to work for. Um, so yes, they... That's great. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah. it. It's 12 midnight in my country. So <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I know about the resume part is always so uh, very tricky. Like uh, what she mentioned before, like a putting picture or some personal information is also required when I was applying the job in China. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of different requirements here. And uh, later on, uh, we're going to have uh, another information session. We're going to invite the guest speaker from the workroom and you can attend that session later for, and they're going to talk about what is the Canadian template about the resume and what is appropriate and not appropriate to, to do on your resume. And uh, we have a few questions at the chat. Uh, the first one is, uh, can I have the record of this session? Yes, for sure. We are recording this session. Later on, we're going to share the link with everyone. And uh, you are feel free to go back to check uh, this session. And uh, uh, the second one is, can you give some details about how volunteering helping for teacher job or how to get a volunteering opportunity? Uh, for this part, it, you can uh, follow up with me, and there are some a lot of job opportunity, uh, uh, like a lot of volunteer opportunity in the community. You can reach out to me, and uh, I can uh, give you information related to that part. Okay, and uh, I see we have uh, two more people raising their hand and asking for a question. So, uh, right how now? Did I pronounce your name right? Did you want to? Uh, yes, data? yes, Redwan. Yes. Redwan. Yeah. Thank you, Chen. I am Redwan's wife. I am a permanent resident, and I'm planning to come in June uh, to to Canada. Uh, I'm an English kindergarten teacher. I've been teaching here in Kuwait for eighteen years. Uh, I want your help, um, and the way how how I'm gonna send my Canadian resume to schools in Canada. What is the easy way to send my Canadian resume to schools? I want to work as a kindergarten teacher there. Thank you. Leah, so, would you know? Um, if, you, if you've already, you've got your permanent residency, you said? Yes. Yes. Okay. So make sure that that's clearly indicated um, on your resume. So depending on, uh, do you know where you're going to land? Like which city province yes. yeah yes uh, i have chosen san john okay nice. Excellent. yes so yes. you can as jeremy mentioned you can go on career beacon um also you can be looking on linkedin or indeed but all i would say 99 percent, if not 100 percent, of all applications are done online so the employer is going to require that you submit your resume for the jobs that you find um through usually their applicant tracking system. So you can also, you know, Google and search, or I mean, this uh, St. John's newcomers would know the schools that you can apply to, um, but it is, the norm is to find the job online and then submit your application that way. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for yes. your help. 
you yes, get. and uh, also uh, right now you are currently outside of Canada using the online uh, job searching platform is the easiest way for you to work on it and uh, career bacon is a very a good resource for you to start working on that and later on when you are landed in central area and you can reach out to me or my coworker here and uh, we will try to see if we can help you with some networking activity like Jeremy mentioned before which is very important on the job searching uh, stage and uh, let's see what we can help later but right now it's the online job searching and try thank you can to... you send me your email please on the chat can you send yeah, me your... I... I already sent my email thank you so address much. on the chat. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm seeing so much right for now, your help. And no problem. I'm seeing right now that there are multiple different kindergarten support worker positions, but also I know uh, my partner, she is a teacher and teachers specifically have to go through like a, a online district portal to apply for their jobs. So it might not actually be worth reaching out to um, once you land in St. John, reaching out to the district to see how you can get your name in there. Maybe you could substitute once they check credentials and everything like that. You could work maybe into a substitute position and then kind of grow from there. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Yes. And yeah. uh, exactly. Thank you. Or, uh, exactly when you are doing the online job searching and you can see uh, the employers, they are posting about the requirements our job, job description and the front there you can see uh, what are the employers expectation is there any certification required it or education required it you can get all of those information online and uh, from the uh, career baker platform yeah okay. and uh, thank you so, no worry and we're gonna go to the uh, next person uh, Shemi. yes uh, hello, everyone. My name is Shamil. Hello, Tavia. And uh, dear uh, information providers, Jeremy and Leah. Um, actually, I'm a career changer and I have a question related to this uh, topic. Uh, what can you recommend? What strategy can you recommend? Could you recommend, Jeremy, for career changers? For example, I worked as a ATM servicer for several years, but then I decided to um, change my career to front-end development. So I'm a freelancer now and I'm working in that area. So this is the first question. And the second question, the second question is, um, what do you think how to, what's the best way to apply uh, for a job in St. John? for participants in Atlantic immigration program. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> for sure, yeah, I can speak to that a little, a little bit. So sometimes people forget that they, by doing one job or just by being the person you are, you actually have inherent skills or skills that you've developed over time at one job. So unless another job is specifically re requiring certificates, diplomas, anything like that, you, you inherently have transferable skills. So what, what do I mean when I say transferable skills? So let's say, for example, um, in the past, I actually, um, I managed a restaurant. So in managing the restaurant, I booked large groups, I planned events, I delegated tasks, I um, customer service, all that kind of things. So within those, I have project management skills, I have customer service, <laughs> service skills. So that's just one example of having transferable skills. I don't know a whole lot about the tech, the tech world, but I, I would leverage those transferable skills and look at the job that you're applying for and look at the job, look at the experience that you have and try to, you know, play into what they're asking of you. Again, if they're not asking for specific requirements, because some jobs, you know, you need to have this training, you need to have this in order to be able to do safely and properly. But I'm sure Leah could speak to that a bit more too. So you've moved into front-end development, is that? 
Is that correct? Yeah, correct. From uh, IT support to building websites. Okay, excellent. I, I There is a demand uh, for that. So you will read about all these layoffs and tech and whatnot, but those are typically the very, very large companies. So uh, in New Brunswick, there's a lot of um, startup techs or, or smaller, small to mid-size. Um, and so I think to Jeremy's point, playing into the strengths of what, um, you know, in terms of support, then you would have been very responsive. You're solving problems. Those are all skills that employers want, um, you know, the logic behind all of that. And with your front end development, um, apply for those roles if if that's what you're doing or starting to do. Um, I, I am a big believer. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but with the cover letter is sometimes where you can showcase even why you made the career change because moving careers, changing jobs more frequently now is very common. Not all employers will get that, but it's not bad to say, you know, I was here for one or two years and I was here and whatnot. I think it is very normal now to, to change careers. So um, I think in that, the skills that you'd have um, and the qualifications would would be well highlighted in your resume and, and cover letter. Um, when you ask about the AIP program, I'm not sure if, um, if anyone from the center or newcomers is, do you have access to all the employers that are part of the AIP? Uh, we have um, the contact with the AIP program, and we also have the AIP program advisor within our SGNC team. So later on, if you want, you can reach out to us, and I can connect you with our navigator here. Yeah, and he can provide more information about the AIP part. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And uh, I just put uh, our career vacant uh, uh, website on the chat bar. So uh, if you are interested, please always click that link or you can just uh, search it on Google. And uh, I, I <laughs> during the presentation, I keep checking the website. I noticed there's a lot of really good part from the website. So I highly recommend everyone to go to this page and to see how you, you can benefit from the career vacant. And uh, do we have any more questions from our participant for today? If anyone has questions about anything you're curious about, there's there's no bad questions. The, the job search process can be overwhelming. And we understand uh, that. Can it, I have, I'm yeah, sorry. go ahead. Can, can I have uh, one more question uh, about your website? Uh, which cities uh, does it support? So or countries? We, just Canada from, I, I believe just Canada, but um, we do offer jobs all across Canada, but primarily the, the majority of our jobs are located around Atlantic Canada. So being Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. I think we have some in Quebec too, but um, yeah, the majority being Atlantic Canada. Thank you. And uh, I have a quick question from here. So uh, when we're applying the job from Korea Bacon, I noticed that there's a, like a mainly two way. One will lead you uh, to the company, their official website. And another way is for us to uh, fill out the information from Korea Bacon website. So uh, I'm wondering, uh, for example, if I apply it today, and I haven't heard from the employers for two weeks and the position is still opening. Can I apply for it again? And like fill out my information again from here? Normally I would try to follow up as opposed to putting in another application. Leah, you would have more experience here. Yeah, because it it will probably show, it would show as a duplication on their side. So this is forever the frustration of the black hole. You apply for a job, you don't hear back, right? And most employers rely on the technology to, you know, select who they're going to, um, you know, choose for an interview. So again, I know what you all do there and what Jeremy was talking about, it's sort of that network um, building can help. Because a lot of times, 
the stat is incredible. It's 80 or 90% of job seekers never hear back when they put in their application. So putting it in a second time, it's not going to help. And in some case, it may even deter. Um, so what I would do is, yes, if it's a job you're very interested in, I'm a huge proponent of the virtual networking. And I know that it became very big, obviously, in COVID. But what you can do is, you know, use LinkedIn to see if you can find the hiring manager, the town acquisition. And if you craft a very professional, um, you know, message to them, that might, you know, sort of highlight you above the others. The other thing that can happen is employers put the job out there. They don't check resumes for a few weeks. Maybe the position got filled internally. They forget to take it down. So the frustrations you're going to feel in the job search are real. Um, you just have to almost, I think Jeremy was mentioning this, like treat it like a job. So you, you know, constantly doing sort of the follow-up and the search. I'm going to put in the chat here too, and we can send these links as well separate so they can go in the email, but there is a free webinar coming up. Um, it's a company, I, I think she's in the U S but she, she works a lot with employers on how to write better job descriptions. Um, but she also, is offering um, this one hour free session to help you with your LinkedIn profile. So to write a header that you'll get noticed for. So for Shamil, uh, this might be something, you know, where you're talking about the career change, you know, maybe she can come up with something that's really, um, I'll just say like snappy or whatnot. So you get noticed because recruiters also go in LinkedIn and search for certain skills. So I would recommend if if that, I know we're in all different time zones, but if that time works um, to sign up for that session, because that can be kind of a key, because again, a, a way to reach out to the potential um, hiring manager or the employers is through LinkedIn. So you want to have the best um, social presence on there possible. Yeah, since you mentioned that it might take some of the employers like a few weeks for them to review the resume, do you have like a general idea about usually how long it's going to take the employers for them to review the resume? Are they like usually in general way, like one week or a few weeks or something like that? That's a great question. Um, the employers that do it right, and I'm going to say maybe that's 20%, <laughs> are reviewing daily and um, have a method to follow up, even if it's an mm -hmm. auto message saying, hey, Leah, thanks for applying, not a fit at this time, you know, keep keep checking back sort of thing. Um, yeah. Others will take, you know, two to three weeks to, to review resumes. And if you think about it, a lot of companies, it'll depend if you're applying for a startup, you might hear right away because mm -hmm. that hiring manager is the founder and does all the things in the company. If you apply, maybe say to like uh, a much larger company, typically what happens is your resume goes in, um, the technology might kind of vet it, but there'll be a recruiter or some person in HR looking at the resume then typically where the holdup is, they'll send the people that they deem qualified to the hiring manager. Then the hiring manager has to find the time to get reach back out and set up an interview and so on. So the delay can often be the hiring manager saying, oh, I'll get to this in a week or two weeks. So um, it's not a numbers game. Um, you don't want to have to, you know, resume blast and, and apply for jobs that, you know, you really don't want. But again, to go back to what Jeremy said, sort of consistently making this a process every day, because ultimately, yes, um, you will start hearing back. But if you just apply for one in one week and it takes them a month to get back to you, those other 30 days, you need to still be active in your job search. Okay, yeah, thank you so much for telling everyone that far because uh, when I was meeting clients and some of them, they might apply for the uh, different position and they haven't got any feedback like a one week and they're super frustrated. It's like, okay, no employers want me and I, I cannot get a job or something like that. So just to be more clear and let everyone know that it, 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 it's a chance for the uh, employers to take a, a longer time to process your resume and uh, for the HR uh, department to review your resume and arrange an interview or something like that. 
So don't be frustrated and keep it like a, a full-time job, like Jeremy said before, and uh, we're gonna keep working on the job searching part. And uh, is anyone still have any question? Please feel free to just uh, unmute yourself. Hi, Sama. Hi. So I just wanted to say again, on behalf of the St. John Ecommerce Center, we really appreciate your partnership, your collaboration. Tavia did a wonderful job uh, of bringing you on board to uh, talk to our clients. We really appreciate it and we look forward to more and more um, connection and more collaboration, more sessions. Um, Olga is also doing a great job with uh, uh, the mentorship program. So if anybody on uh, the call today is interested to be a mentee, I've heard you talked about, someone was talking about teaching. And one of the important things uh, for newcomers is to connect with someone in the same industry or in the same field to understand better how things work. So if, if anybody is interested to connect with someone who is experienced in uh, the St. John market and have similar experience, please reach out to Olga as well. It's, uh, it's great to connect you and welcome you all in St. John. I just wanted to say thank you so much and off to the team. <laughs> And I also want to invite all participants to follow our next uh, information sessions uh, regarding the cover letter, interviewing skills, public speaking, uh, cultural competence. So all these things that will help you to promote you on the labor market. And uh, please follow us in our social media and uh, those who are already in our 